a group has uh, looked at uh, MRD testing uh, in the Gadolin trial and published their data in the, the journal Leukemia, and I believe they presented it at ASH uh, last year. And it's very interesting. Um, MRD, of course, stands for either measurable or minimal residual disease, and it's a complex topic depending on how you test for it and you use where you test for it, whether it be blood or bone marrow, uh, et cetera. So uh, these investigators used a, a quantitative PCR test um, for either portion of the 1418 translocation or the uh, immunoglobulin gene. And so that was the technique they used to uh, find minimal residual disease in patients. And uh, to remind you, the Gadolin trial was a trial for relapse patients where patients were randomly assigned either bendamustine alone or bendamustine plus obinutuzumab with obinutuzumab maintenance. Okay, so that's the design of Gadolin. And the results showed improved uh, outcomes, progression-free and overall survival in the group that got the combo, obinutuzumab and bendamustine. And so these investigators then have gone back and looked at their MRD data. Uh, MRD was tested pre-treatment and then um, after three cycles, then at the end of chemotherapy uh, treatment, and then every six months thereafter. And what they found was that about 70% of patients uh, were able to detect a product that could be followed with minimal residual disease, which leaves 30% not able to have a product detected. So it's not something that would be applied to every patient. They showed that uh, patients who achieved a negative MRD state at end of therapy had a better prognosis than those who did not achieve MRD negativity or positive MRD residual disease. Um, so it had prognostic implications. Unlike what we've seen in CLL, uh, MRD did not trump the treatment that they had received. That is, even, um, so MRD negative patients that had been treated with the combo, Benda plus Obin, had a better progression-free survival than MRD negative patients who were treated with only Benda. So it didn't still matter what treatment the patient had received in terms of impacting their prognosis and their progression-free survival. So MRD did not trump the treatment that they had received. Um, so it's not an independent prognosticator. Um, so, you know, I would, I would say that, um, you know, the, the authors of this paper concluded that uh, MRD is ready for routine clinical use, but they acknowledge that we don't really know what to do with uh, the results other than prognosticate. That is, if a patient has MRD positivity, we don't really know how to act to improve clinical outcomes that are of importance, like progression-free survival. So I'm not sure I agree that we in clinical practice should sort of routinely be doing MRD testing, honestly. And my rationale is that we don't really know what to do with the results. You know, yes, it has prognostic implications, but it's costly. And I don't know how to change my patient's treatment if they have MRD positivity. So this is actually a very similar situation to what we face in multiple myeloma, where an MRD assay has been FDA approved. Uh, and it's been shown very clearly that that MRD assay has prognostic implications. But those of us who treat myeloma know that we don't really know what to do if their MRD is positive and how to improve their outcome any more than we're already doing. I really think follicular lymphoma is sort of in, in the same boat right now. So I think in the future, we would like to see two types of trials for MRD. One would be, can we eliminate, can we use MRD to follow patients uh, with lymphoma as opposed to using 
imaging studies that exposed the patient to radiation, CAT scans, PET scans, et cetera, because it would be really nice to be able to tell a patient that their disease is relapsing by just doing a blood test and knowing you know, when that relapse is, is coming. Second, it would be nice to know how to improve a, person's, a patient's outcome based on a positive MRD test. That, you know, that is, we could say, okay, we've given this patient three cycles of bendamustine and obinutuzumab, but their MRD is still positive. How can we do better? Should we take these MRD positive patients and give them a different treatment? Whereas the MRD patient, negative patients, we know they're going to do really well. So that would be a really uh, a practical application of MRD testing. But until we have data that tells us how to act on the results, I don't plan to use MRD testing in my clinical practice.